Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the Wednesday, December 18th, 2019 meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. Uh, I will call this meeting to order. And before we take the Pledge of Allegiance, I would ask everybody in the audience and uh, the councilors, we're going to stand for a moment of silence after the Pledge of Allegiance in honor of Mr. James Pearson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> uh, item number three is the roll call. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Gleistein? Here. Councilor Katarina? Here. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Hamill? Here. Chairman Johnson? Here. Uh, item number four is general public comments for anything that is not on the agenda. Uh, before I actually open up public comments, just a quick uh, housekeeping item for those that at uh, in the audience and at home, we are actually adjourning at the end of the meeting for executive session tonight. Uh, we did so so we could get our business out of the way and then go into executive session to the benefit of the public. So there is a final agenda item that has us going into executive session. We may be there for an hour, hour and a half, and we'll come back and adjourn, and, but that process will only take about three seconds. So after we go into executive session, it's, it's essentially over. Uh, so anyways, for item number four, general public comments, are there any? Any general public comments? None? Okay. Uh, item number five, uh, approval of the minutes for the December 4th, 2019 regular town council meeting. So moved. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Item number six, adjustments to the agenda. I don't believe there are any. Item number seven, I have signed the treasurer's warrants before the meeting. Moving on to order number 19101, uh, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the following applicants who have applied for the renewal of their manufactured housing communities license. Uh, number one, Crystal Springs Manufactured Housing Communities, Crystal Springs, MHP, LLC. Number two, Pinecrest Manufacturing Housing, Teresa DeFosses and Tina Marie Smith. And number three, Hillcrest Manufactured Housing, Teresa DeFosses. Uh, I'll turn to Todi. Thank you. Uh, the applications are all on file. They are complete. Uh, we did confer with the Planning and Codes Department. We received a memo in your packet from them. Um, Crystal Springs on Route 22, they've, uh, they are now under new ownership and they're trying to bring everything up to code. Uh, it's recommended that uh, these licenses be approved. And do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Public hearing. Excuse me, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Public hearing first. <laughs> Anybody in the public would like to speak to this? Okay, seeing none, motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? No discussion with that. All those in favor? 7 0. Moving on, order number 19, 102, a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a food handler's license from Matthew, is it Boltress, DBA Smoothie Doctor, located on 33 Highest Parkway. This is um, the location of Foley Fitness, and they're within the building, um, and it's exactly what it says, smoothies, <laughs> smoothie <laughs> doctor. So it's recommended that it be approved. Great, and it is public hearing, so is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this item? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? None opposed? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, new business order number 19103. First reading to authorize the following appropriations and expenditures for the public safety building project. First, $350,000 for furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and $650,000 for miscellaneous mechanical fixtures 
and $99,434 for IT equipment and $20,000 for a re reader board sign. And further, in order to fund such appropriations, approve the use of the following sources of revenue, $259,000 in interest earned on the public safety building unspe unspent bond proceeds, and $275,434 from the un undesignated fund balance. Uh, this item is anticipated to have some discussions and some questions, and for uh, our own education and for the public's as well. We've asked uh, Tom, Tom Hall, our town manager, to start us with a presentation, and hopefully we can Pepper, pepper him with questions and after said presentation. I beg, beg your pardon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, perhaps you take public comment uh, before. I didn't want to steal okay. any time yeah. for public. Is there anybody in here in the public that would speak? Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the council. My name is Greg Hanscom. Uh, I'm a member of the Ad Hoc Building Committee. And uh, I noted that uh, the ad hoc committee started exactly three years ago, actually November of 19, 19, we should be so lucky, 2016. So three years out, now here we are Here we are this evening. My, I will make very brief comments. Um, the ad hoc committee uh, was, phase, was charged in phase one to come up with a feasibility study for a building. It took about a year to do that. And we were guided by uh, one or two very significant value statements. And number one was that we would build a building that would meet all the functional needs of the public safety community for 30 to 40 years out, and that we would build a Chevrolet building as opposed to a Cadillac building. That, came, that became kind of a, not a joke, but it became something we would took, we cleave to and we hope we've done that. And uh, so after the year's work with the, uh, in the phase one, the feasibility study, uh, the, uh, in November of 2017, the referendum vote was, gone, was brought before the community and it was affirmed, which then got us into, uh, so we, were, we then said, because of that vote, we're gonna build a building. And so that became then the design phase, phase number two, when the the engineers came on board and the architects came on board and uh, we went through that process. You may remember that as we were getting ready to go out to bid for services and materials, that's when the economy of our nation really began to take a st steep uptick. And it was also a time when we began to have tariffs, especially between the United States and Canada, which added a significant amount of cost to the project unanticipated. Um, we, nine months after the uh, referendum, we had a uh, project uh, um, that was actually $2.79 million over our estimate of what we'd hoped to build the building for. So we knew we had to do some what was called uh, value engineering. And being a uh, layperson, I wasn't really sure what value engineering was, so I and uh, so I brought a, just a very quick, short, uh, uh, and I think succinct definition. Value engineering is a systematic and organized approach to providing the necessary functions in a project at the lowest cost. This is done by substituting materials and methods with less expensive alternatives without sacrificing functionality. So the uh, hired, uh, Con con the hired staff and then the board and the, uh, the ad hoc committee went through an exhausting, exhausting uh, process of looking at everything in that building. And instead of, we brought down, we were able to reduce the uh, overage uh, of $2.75 million, cutting it back to two point, cutting back of that, reducing it by $2.375 million uh, without, without compromising the scope or the pro programs of that building as, you, as it is now being built. So we're now near the end of the project. Uh, some would say sooner than later, but, but we, have, uh, we have maintained the, the budget uh, in, that, in, in uh, consideration, even in consideration of the uh, strong market conditions and bit of, a bit of a late start getting in, doing winter work as opposed to fall work in the early states, we were then one half of 1% of the budget as we speak tonight. Now I know there's a lot to talk about and I understand that this is my, four, over my career, I've had, this is my fourth building uh, project and uh, 
I must tell you, with all candor and somewhat patting myself, all of us on the back, this is without a doubt the best working group I've ever had, had the privilege to work with. They were in, immediately uh, engaged in a serious manner, and uh, I think the project that we will all enjoy 45th, beyond, beyond my lifetime, I'm sure, will be the product of much of the, uh, the uh, integrity and the hard work of the ad hoc committee. And I know you folks have a difficult charge here in front of you, but I hope to just kind of give you a broad picture and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, counselors, my name is Bruce Bell. Probably a lot of you don't know who I am. I moved here in 1947. Um, my next goal was the fire department. I joined in 1957. In fact, in, nine, in the 60s, I ran the front end loader for Public Works in Scarborough to tear down the old wooden station that now we're looking at replacing. I also worked for the city of Portland for much of my career in Public Works. To start my presentation, I, I really want to compliment the two chief executives of these two departments. This is unusual when you see a police and fire station being built in together. And to separate this and build it in separate buildings would have been astronomically expensive. I've been on the building committee here since the inception. A um, Couple of the issues that I want to bring up are things that I personally feel. First off is my expectation of the DEP permit process would be, I thought, a three month period, being one that was in charge of the engineering section of the City of Portland Public Works. It wound up being six months. Three, four months to get the technical phase done, and then the permit writing took over two months. With my expectation of three months, we should have been starting breaking ground on site around July 4th. We couldn't. We did not start until November. Consequently, everything that we put in the ground, starting with that, the beginning, all the footings and all the concrete work, had to be blanketed and heated, and that was expensive. We had not planned on that. We were looking to have that done earlier in the year, so that project would have been well underway and the footings been in. All of the masonry and, like I said, the footings, they had to be all enclosed and heated, which added considerable amount to the budget cost. I also want to compliment both our rep, um, owner representative, Tom Perkins, and Landry and French for all the work and dedication that they put together to make this project what it is today because it is presently on schedule. How they did it, I don't know. I worked on a project in the city of Portland as a construction manager, and that being Hadlock Field. I know what it was like to try to keep a schedule. And they really did an excellent job. I thank you, and I hope you approve the, uh, these additional funds so this can, project can be completed. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm Kevin Freeman. I'm the uh, chair of the Ad Hoc Building Committee. Um, I, Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and counselors, uh, for uh, hearing us out uh, this evening. Um, a lot of people think that I just stand behind this microphone. Uh, my full-time job for 30 years has been in the construction industry, and, uh, and I've got some uh, experience here in Scarborough because I worked for the construction manager for the expansion of Scarborough High School back in 2005, Pizzagalli Construction Company. And I stood behind this microphone to talk about issue resolution at the time because there was a lot of issues with Scarborough High School. Some of them even had something to do with construction, but most of them were, were political. 
And uh, we got through that project, and I like to tell people that that gym is still standing over there because there were a lot of questions about that at the time. I use that as a point of reference for you on this project because we used a construction management delivery method from this, for this job right from the very beginning, and it's a darn good thing that we did. Because of the, some of the issues that you heard about, the tariffs, the booming economy, uh, the, the lack of manpower in the construction industry, which is going on to this day, um, really impacted the price as we designed this project. It came in, as you heard, nearly $3 million over budget. Because of the construction management delivery method, Landry French, who's our construction manager, worked hand in hand with Tom Perkins, our owner's rep in the design team, and we came up with solutions to cut costs. We went over and looked at Wex's office building over on in South Portland, and we looked at a mechanical system that ultimately was the key to getting this project almost to budget. And when we came here last fall, we were $426,000 over budget, and the town council said, go ahead, you've done a good job. And then we faced that, what Bruce spoke of, we just couldn't get the permit. We couldn't get the DEP permit to start this project. We had phone calls coming in from Amy Volk that finally got things happening for us, and we, we were able to break ground in November of 2018. And, uh, and I can tell you, it's the people that have been working on this project team that have made it happen to keep it within, um, to keep it within schedule and as close to the budget as possible. That 0.5%. 0.5% over budget is, is remarkable in today's economy. Um, and that goes to the, the team that Dennis Landry is here from Landry French, but um, you know that guy out in the field, that superintendent, Steve Lapointe, whose truck is on the job site every morning at 6 a.m. starting up and they've, you know, we've had a lot of workers on site and it's really coming close to um, staying on schedule. Um, so I mention all of that because uh, you know, we're getting close, and it's, and it's all because of the hard work that's been taken in by the team, and it's been a long haul for us. We started, you know, and Peter was on the, uh, was on the feasibility committee. We started in November of 2016. We got it approved in November of 2017. We started the project in November of 2018, and of the nine members of our original committee, the nine citizens, eight are still involved in the project. And we've just been seeing our way through. And to talk about, you know, just looking over, the two chiefs have done a remarkable job. And the man sitting in front of, uh, sitting in between them, Tom Perkins, who we brought on to be our owner's representative. I'll let him tell you about the details, but uh, I just wanted to give you that background and thank you for your time. And I hope we could get, continue to have your support. Thank you. Any other members of the public? Okay, seeing none. No, I'd, I'd like to start with Tom Perkins actually doing uh, two, four or five slides. These, uh, these slides are actually in the council packet and the public packet. Um, some of the territory has been spoken of, but I think it's worth just kind of moving through those and then I have a couple of comments before we turn it back to you. Thank you, Tom, uh, and thank you again for the opportunity to, uh, to come here and again present a very positive report on uh, the progress of our, uh, our, our important project in building this asset next door in our new public safety building. Uh, as others mentioned, my name is Tom Perkins, owner's representative, and uh, I'm a consultant working on behalf of the town to, to manage the project. Um, we've made very steadfast project, uh, progress over the past 14 months, if, if you've seen it. Uh, come out of the ground. And I think what you'll see in some of the photos that we've put into the, to the slide deck here is uh, there's, there's, there's a tremendous amount of work going on. There's uh, 80 to 100 people on that site every day, uh, some working weekends in order to uh, uh, make this project work. Um, in terms of uh, 
sort of some measurable progress. A uh, couple of nice finish photos here of some paint on the walls and some ceramic tile down and grouted and, and ready to start fixtures. Uh, our masonry facade is, is nearly complete. Uh, we set our communications tower uh, this past summer. Um, plantings went in this <coughs> fall so that uh, those are, are for the most part ready uh, for when the building opens here in a couple of months in April. Um, ceramic tile, we are uh, nearly <coughs> finished our furniture order, uh, getting ready to release that. Uh, for fabrication and delivery uh, in March. Um, the critical, mission critical IT and AV equipment that we needed to order with very long lead times, that order has just recently been placed. And again, as you can see, this, this paint drying on the wall. When we talk about uh, schedule, we've hit several milestones. First and foremost, as, as Mr. Bell mentioned, is the, the concrete foundations. Uh, despite the late start, we, we hit the date on that and uh, um, was enabled us to start steel and erecting the, the actual frame of the building. Um, and then just recently, another important milestone that was hit uh, a couple of months ago is that we dried in the building and that allowed the start of finishes, uh, electrical wiring and other critical components. Uh, upcoming milestones that we're tracking uh, very carefully with Landry French and the rest of the project team is the actual completion of the facade, uh, which is scheduled for uh, January when the brick finishes. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of systems that are in this building to make it um, operational. And uh, as such, a third party commissioning uh, firm is retained to start that commissioning and ring out of those systems in February. And then most importantly in March, as all of those things are coming together, we wanna hit, make sure we hit our punch list date. Uh, it hasn't all been perfect. And we've had an issue that came up at the uh, early part of the fall with the exterior insulation on the building, part of which was already installed. Um, we, it didn't meet code. And the team uh, immediately recognized it, rallied together to come up with the uh, most expeditious and uh, cost-effective way to remedy the situation. Uh, that was not a cost borne by the town. Uh, the, the insurance policies in place by the folks uh, from our design team that uh, made the unfortunate error uh, covered that cost. Uh, we received the first checks last week, uh, as a matter of fact, and um, we were able to uh, keep the masonry going and um, keep that piece of the project on track so that we could finish the facade. Did not affect the end date of the project. As other folks have mentioned uh, before I got up to speak, this, this project has quite a history. And uh, as we, we move through various approvals and cost reductions and value engineering efforts, we do very much have in, intact uh, the building that was conceived by the building committee initially uh, that is going up next door. And, and, and as we stated, uh, some folks before me, uh, based on where we were in October of 2018, just before we started, when we presented to you, uh, we're within a half a percent of where we said we were going to be. Um, now, we're not done yet. Uh, we still need to get through a main winter, and there's five months left to go. Uh, we're feeling pretty good about that, given the fact that paint is drying and the amount of things that could pop up are getting smaller and smaller, and we simply need to finish the building. Um, but we do fully intend to give a final reconciliation when the project is done. Uh, in every piece of this, through our updates on uh, newsletters and uh, websites and Facebook and uh, other folks, we've, we've been very transparent and proceeded in good faith uh, on behalf of the citizens here of Scarborough. <clears throat> So Tom's going to speak a little bit more about the actual action request, but I will hang out here in case there are any questions relative to the project. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I'll just have a few quick comments really to kind of uh, tee it up for uh, the council to consider the matter before you. So from, for those of us that have been involved in this project uh, really on a daily basis, certainly on a weekly basis, we're meeting and checking in on a number of issues, including finances. So. Uh, what brings us together this evening and what we're going to talk about is something is certainly no surprise to us that have been involved. I fully acknowledge that uh, only two of you on the council currently 
uh, were on the council at the time, um, uh, just last uh, October. And so I, I appreciate there's a, a lot of history. We're trying our best to fill in some of those gaps for you. Um, but we've known this day is coming, and uh, we're really proud of the work that's been done between, since then, uh, or between then and now. Um, there were a couple of, uh, you might ask yourself, why have, we, why have we waited all this time? And in my mind, there's really two factors. One, uh, we've always been counting on the proceeds of the sale of the existing building, and we've been marketing that property for well over a year, uh, and it was quite possible and likely that we would get more than we were expecting. Uh, we thought that would be an important thing to know about before we had this final f uh, financial discussion. Well, we now have some clarity in that regard. We're not uh, across the finish line yet, but we have the building under contract. We now know what that number is, and I'm, I'm pleased to report uh, that we're, we're hitting our mark in that respect. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, an extra $10,000 than we expected, but for all intents and purposes, uh, we are covering what we expected. The other critical piece is, and this has been mentioned from this podium um, earlier, is that things happen over construction, and we wanted to make sure we had some good construction experience. We're now to the point of the building thinking about finishes, uh, that though there could be things that crop up between now and the end of the project, um, you know, th those sorts of things are getting smaller and smaller at this point. So uh, the time is right, and for the, those members of council that were on this past finance committee, this issue has come up kind of in conversation, if you will, and uh, this was the expected deadline. I, I had promised that I would uh, come back to you to the full council by the end of the year, if only for my own peace of mind, because um, we are very close to the point of me needing to sign contracts for monies that I don't have authority to spend. And so it is, uh, we're before you this evening uh, for all those reasons, and I, and I really would not have uh, come any earlier, frankly. Uh, in terms of how the action item is postured before you this evening, uh, leading up to this, I did consult with the town attorney. Uh, their advice, uh, in my opinion, but I respect their advice and have followed it, uh, they've taken a very conservative, again, in my opinion, uh, view and interpretation of uh, the town charter, in particular section 907, Point one, and in their opinion, not only did the voters authorize uh, indebtedness up to uh, 19.5 million, uh, which was the specific question asked of the voters, uh, the attorneys have also advised that in doing so, they also have set the total appropriation amount. Mm -hmm. um, and that amount was actually contained in some of the explanatory statements, again, on that ballot. And so uh, that's an issue that, um, we stand before you and, and, and are proposing a solution to satisfy that, uh, that component. So the order itself has two parts. The first part addresses the appropriation piece. Uh, the council has authority to appropriate monies, and that's what uh, we're asking to do, you to do in part one. The second piece has to do with uh, the funding mechanism to fund those needs. It should be noted on the first one, uh, those items, uh, I think there's four as I recall, those have all always been part of the project, and they have been singled out um, simply because they are items that we have not yet committed for, and so, um, and they're items that uh, remain to be done. Um, in terms of the, f the funding requirements, uh, though we have additional debt capacity, I've known that right along, I've not really spoken to that, uh, and perhaps I've misread things, but my sense in working with uh, this council for a few short weeks and past councils, uh, the overall indebtedness of the town is, is a big concern. And so uh, I was trying to propose funding solutions that, uh, that would not require us to, to borrow more, frankly. And so the two uses that I proposed, uh, the first of which I hope uh, should be fairly easy for uh, council members to appreciate and, and agree with, uh, is to use uh, interest proceeds from uh, the uh, interest earnings from the bond proceeds. Uh, as we uh, purchase bonds, um, we have them in an interest bearing account and uh, luckily some of those interest rates have actually rebounded. So we have a fairly sizable interest earnings. Uh, it's worth noting that the number of 259,000 is as of end of June 2019. So undoubtedly there are more earnings uh, and perhaps if there is the need for a final reconciliation, that would be, that would be an area that we could certainly look to, to to fund any additional requirement that may exist. Uh, and then the final piece of the rec funding recommendation is to uh, rely on undesignated fund balance. 
and the reason I offer that, uh, and I don't offer that lightly, because that's been an ongoing um, commitment on the part of staff and past councils to really do our best to preserve that, not only preserve the undesignated fund balance, but actually build it over time. And we've had limited success. I'm pleased to report that we're we're no longer budgeting it, uh, use of it in annual budgets. That was uh, historically a practice that was fairly common. Um, and I glossed over, but I, I know some members of council have asked questions about this. Um, when this committee uh, met with you back in October of 2018, there was a fair amount of discussion around what, what really was pod positive budget performance in FY19, the year that we were in at the time. And there were any number of things, including um, reimbursement for a salt shed that was purchased 20 years ago, believe it or not, uh, and a number of other positive things. The effect of which I think gave, I believe, gave confidence to the council that there are resources when the time comes. Uh, yet there was no definitive action, no action taken to actually earmark or dedicate those funds for this purpose. And so those funds still exist uh, at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, they filled a fund balance, and that's where they sit uh, right now. And as a, I digress for just a, a brief moment, that's essentially how we're building fund balance. It's positive budget for performance. In recent years, we've had great success with excise revenue exceeding budget estimates. Uh, and Peter can attest to this. Every year we inch it up and wonder if we're going to meet it, and every year we seem to exceed it. So that's one of the things that helps us um, pretty consistently. And then the other one is, um, you know, uh, uh, not spending everything appropriated. And there's all sorts of reasons that that may occur over the cross of, uh, over the course of a entire budget year and the entire town departments. So those two factors alone, um, uh, you know, often produce a budget surplus, and that becomes fund balance. So I, Mr. Chairman, I think I'll stop there. Uh, there's a number of folks here that uh, can respond to questions. Uh, we offer ourselves up uh, yep. to respond to questions uh, for those for territory we have not covered. Thank you. I just Go. have a quick question, Tom. Um, how much is in the undesignated fund balance right now? You'll be seeing a report on this. This is obviously a part of the annual audit, and there are some final entries. Um, but the best information I have as of today is... Seven million seven hundred thousand seven seven one eight zero five five, and as a, I guess a practical or a comparative piece, we have a, uh, a minimum target of eight point three three percent. That that is eight point seven seven percent. So we're just, uh, a, a, just slightly above that. We do have a target of ten percent. So we're still still not at our ideal target. When you say 10%, can you just clarify 10% of the net budget or? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, it's, it's actually gross uh, gross expenditures. I don't think okay. it's, it's not that. Thanks. Councilor Hayes? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll start with a couple comments at first and then maybe some questions. And yeah, I mean, I, I would echo everything that was said at the podium. For me personally as a councilor, this isn't about funding the remaining balance that we need to. It's really just a question of how are we going to do that. So I want everybody to know that this isn't about you know, I applaud. I, I, as referenced, I was on the early sort of the building committee. I just applaud all the work and collaboration that did take place. It was a remarkable process, and we should be proud of what we have. So this isn't about not funding it. It is how do we fund it. So with that, then some questions. The other thing I want to be clear, because I at least have gotten some personal questions that I think our, our community is somewhat concerned or misunderstand. I think they're thinking that the cost overruns are due to these particular items that are listed here, like furniture and other mm -hmm. things. And I just want to know, we knew two years ago that we were going to have, this day was coming. We had a $400,000 shortfall, and it was due to the reasons, mostly because of tariffs at the time. Trump tariffs happened right after we had started the project. There was steel and materials coming from other places that we were subject to. So that part's not a surprise. Um, I want everybody to know I, I support funding this. It's just the, the mechanism by which we do that. And so turn to that, Tom, I, mm -hmm. I do have some questions. Um, and some of the questions I asked is, this is a microcosm of some other issues that are facing us. So that was my first question. When we 
we're faced with this. I think we did, I, I, I don't know how many, Jimmy, you were there, right? Mm -hmm. I think you and I were there. We did have a long conversation about the 400,000. Where are we comfortable? Absolutely, the town council at that point said, yes, go ahead. So I'll absolutely echo that. We did identify some things that we thought that worked positively. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought in some way, we didn't, so we didn't set those aside to a restricted fund. They just went into unrestricted. Correct. Okay. And so my second question then, Tom, is as we think about what we're facing this year, so we have this issue which may come out of unrestricted funds. We also have a, a long-standing sort of disagreement about some of the assessed values for the shore communities. At one point, we had put, we had increased overlay mm -hmm. by, for about 350000 Did that go into a restricted, restricted fund, or is that unrestricted? Is that still available? That's still in, under, uh, it's still in, it's in fund balance. There was not a separate reserve account, but I can report in that year, um, we turned back to fund balance $393,000, so. But we, that's, but that's an unrestricted. Correct. It's not okay. kept in a separate reserve account. That's a, certainly an action Council could consider doing that if you wished. So, so part of the question that I have, and as we look ahead to what's coming, then we have some shortfalls on the modular school units, both mm -hmm. for what's been installed and what is already in the budget for this year, <clears throat> which will come from impact fees maybe? Is there a balance on impact fees that cover that, or would that be unrestricted fund balance too? I don't know what that deficit is. You know as much as I do. It, it's in the seventy or eighty thousand dollar range for the, for the first two, and I think it's likely that it's going to be similar to that for right. the second. Well, you know two. more about that than I do, but okay. I, I can report definitively that in the uh, school impact fee account, if that's what you choose to use, uh, there is about seven hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars in it. And that's what we used originally for the ones that were done off, off cycle, right? Yes, I believe since the inception of that impact fee account, uh, we've historically used it to offset school debt. Um, I believe, at least during my tenure last year, was the first time we used it for a very specific purpose, which was to fund um, the modulars. Um, yes. And then, and then the next thing that's facing us is Heard Park, which is on the agenda for a budget item next year. That's coming from beach funds, maybe. Is that restricted or unrestricted? Um, it, it's a separate reserve account, so, so it's it restricted, is restricted for that purpose. And, so and it, we've not even gone so far to necessarily think about the funding, but I would expect that would be the likely um, funding source for that project if, if it moves forward. So my strategic question is, if the likelihood that we're going to have major capital investments that we're going to need to bond in the next two years, i.e. a school, potentially, mm -hmm. and if that's in the 60 to $80 million quarter, if we dip into unrestricted fund balance to the tune of 700000 this year, I'd always thought that that is a, a warning sign to the bond market that we're going, when our goal is to increase reserves to a goal mm -hmm. and we pull them down, will that have a bond impact? Is that something we need to worry about and find other funding sources that maybe will not impact so dramatically the restricted, the unrestricted fund balance? Yeah, I, I can't say definitively, but we've had this conversation enough with our financial advisor that I believe it could have a negative drag and it could affect our bond rating, particularly with Moody's. Uh, they are, as a, as a company, they are uh, very interested and sensitive to fund balance. That's a very important factor. So with the debt that we have, even a small percentage change in the interest rate can have a big impact on us. So it could. I, I recall Joe Patera, um, in response to a similar question, said a, uh, a downgrade uh, would result in 10 basis point hmm. penalty, if you will. So on 80 million, what is that? I mean, it's a big number, right? I mean, I don't, I don't one tenth of one percent. Okay. Yeah, I can't do it by <laughs> yeah. head either. But your point's well taken. I think we're, we should be extremely sensitive. The other cautionary note is uh, the good news is we have a fund balance policy. Not every community does. Um, when you have a policy, they make they want to make darn sure you follow it. Yeah. And so I, I think you know that's that's the other part of that equation. And there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room we have, but not much. Yeah, and, and I still remember some of the conversations because we're old timers, G. Murray and I, <laughs> just on the council, not, not other implications. I was going to say, watch that. <laughs> um, but that had always been a trigger that we get positive points as we have built toward that fund balance. Mm -hmm. 
that is sending positive signals. Once we, we dipped into it once, I think it had an impact. So the other question I had when you started off the conversation by saying when we went to referendum and there were, I think in, in the consumer's eyes, our constituent's eyes, there's going to be two ways of looking at it. Did we authorize a total spend of 21.5? Or do we authorize a total borrowing of 19, what is it, 19, 19 five? But what's occurred that you say there's room in that borrowing debt mm -hmm. is a new market phenomenon where we got $700,000 back in premium. bond premium, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost 900. And so we used, we, we haven't borrowed all that we had. Correct. But in effect, what we're doing, if, if the voters thought they were authorizing 21.5 and we need another 500, but what we're actually doing is we're actually going to have a project creep in the number because we're using that bond premium. And we really haven't talked. Because the other thing I was going to ask you, you've applied it to this. Mm -hmm. But when we were back here in the fall, when we were going to re refinance $30 million worth of bonds, we were going to have 2 to $3 million of bond premium, we thought. And how are we going to apply that? I thought we were going to apply it to debt service. Remember back in the fall when we you know, Joe came to us and we actually approved an action item to refinance all the bonds and we're going to have significant bond premium. Mm -hmm. we, we had thought we we're going to apply that to debt service going forward, right? I, that was certainly one of the things discussed. We yeah. did not go through that with that bond issue. I it think didn't that, go through. But I, I think the, the point is, and frankly, Peter, I think you've been part of the finance committee for... All those years, I know. Well, since the Wentworth project, and that's the first time I can remember where there was bid premium. Yeah. And this is something that we don't ask for, we don't count on, because we don't know whether it's coming, if so, how much. And so there's always a discussion at the time when it's realized that there's a component there, what do we do with it? And more times than not, we've first paid <coughs> cost of issuance, uh, and anything left over, we've reduced the amount we've had to borrow. Um, another valid in, uh, use would be to to reserve it and pay debt service. Going in fact, with Wentworth, we did that because um, after the fact, we ended up borrowing more than we needed more. for the project. But, but I thought in that case, there was an IRS requirement that it had to be used only for the Wentworth building. Is only that? for the Wentworth and within a very short period, period of time. time. So we had to accelerate that. Um, we dumped it into fund balance and brought it in over a series of two budget years. But since then, all the subsequent ones, uh, bond issues, have had a component of bid premium and I believe in almost all, I believe in all cases, um, we've actually reduced the amount we had, we were intending to borrow, be taking that into account. But, okay. And my last question then for you, on interest income on the bonds, did you budget that this year? Because you knew we were going to bond it out and have funds? I mean, in the past, hasn't bond interest just gone into sort of operational income? That I, it, so I, does it have a budget impact? My question is the 259. Hmm. Does it have a budget impact to you for this calendar year or next calendar year? No, I was not counting on it. Okay. Uh, frankly, um, for a, better than a decade, the interest rate earnings were so ni almost nil. And so that was not something we really were accustomed to. But in the event that it d does exist and we wouldn't use it for this purpose, I would be using it for debt service in the right. next fiscal year. Right. I, I would, I'm not counting on it, but it would be a nice thing. Um, to help us with some of our other challenges next fiscal year. Yeah, so so for the 259, we either can use it for this or it could be used to offset debt service next budget cycle. Yes, those are the only two things, as I understand it, that, that can be used for. Thank you. Just a, a final point on the, on the, the ballot, uh, and this ballot language uh, has had a lot of consideration, at least by me, over the last several weeks and months. Uh, another um, number that's on this same sheet uh, included an estimate of the total um, total cost of the issuance, including debt, excuse me, including interest costs. And to do so, we, we assumed, in actual fact, we came in with a much more favorable rate than the assumption had. And so uh, just another point of reference is that in spite of all of this discussion, we will be well within the estimate, if you will, that was included on that ballot of the total cost of the project, including interest, because we were able to get a much lower uh, interest in actual fact. And, and last, but when you mentioned the legal opinion, was it the legal opinion their greatest comfort would be if we went back and rebonded the amount that we needed, the additional amount, bond the additional amount we need? Was that their, the I, most comfortable place they were? 
I, I wouldn't, I don't want to characterize for them. Um, you know, what they said is that the council has its own appropriation authority and that's how I've proceeded uh, before you this evening. But I suppose going to voters is, is uh, equally acceptable. Some might argue preferable. Um, if, if you choose to talk about that further, I'd like to make sure you're aware of the consequences of, of just delay. And that's something I, I hope you'd be receptive to. Thank you. Yeah, first I want to uh, echo what Peter said about the, uh, about the project. I don't think there's anybody here on the council that wants to reduce the project, stop the project, derail the project. It's basically about how we're going to pay for this overage. Uh, Tom, you mentioned that legal opinion. Is that out for us to, or could you read it or interpret it for us? On I, the I, have legal a, I have one here. Essentially, I'll, if you allow me, I'll paraphrase it. I think yep. I could you did, do that, which please? is essentially the council has its own authority uh, with its with limits, obviously, uh, to appropriate funds. And the way the order has been postured is within your authority to do. Again, you could choose to go to the voters and seek and receive that authority as a as another option. I I don't see that as preferable in this case, but uh, right. I'm I'm just trying to reconcile the the. Uh, to charter 400,000 to that opinion. I just, something is, I'm missing something. The charter says 400,000 goes to the voter on a capital project. Why is our legal attorney saying that we don't need to do that? In well, the, the, language, the language is limited to a single capital project. And so herein it gets, it starts to, it depends how you read that section. This is an area that I think hopefully rules and policies uh, uh, takes the charge this coming year and forms a charter commission and, and helps to clarify some language. It would be helpful if we all can equally can read and equally appreciate the uh, the meaning and the and the intent of all parts of the charter. This is the one that continually comes up time and time again. How do you interpret this? Because I, I interpret this: the overall project was twenty one million dollars. We overshoot it. We pull out the items that we we've, we've gone over on the budget. And then we reclassify them separately to be under the 400,000. Is that how you're interpreting this? Uh, I'm not sure how, well, part the, of the question I should answer. Uh, try them both. Well, right or wrong, I have been always of the opinion that Section 9071 dealt with indebtedness. And uh, frankly, in my experience, this is the first time the attorneys have raised this uh, other aspect of setting in the overall appropriation um, as a secondary component of that. So perhaps I've been wrong all this time, but uh, you know, there have been multiple folks that have sat in that chair and we've had similar discussions right. and it's always been around indebtedness. And um, That's not referenced though in the charter, is it specifically indebtedness? Doesn't it just say capital expenditures, capital projects, 400,000? goes to the voter? No, the title actually specifically calls out indebtedness and the first sentence speaks to the indebtedness com component as well. I can read it to you if you like. If you don't mind. Certainly. Title says voter referendum required for certain bond issues. So it, it has to do with bonds, right? Well, well, the title would suggest so. Yeah, yeah. The language, however, goes on to say uh, the town council shall, sh shall submit orders or resolves authorizing the issuance of general obligation securities of the town right. indebtedness yep. or the appropriation expenditure of funds derived solely from municipal so revenue sources or a combination of both in a principal amount greater than $400,000 for a single capital improvement or item of capital equipment to vote a referendum subject to the following. Then it goes further. So. Open to interpretation, I guess. I think it's fair to say that, sir, yes. Right. What I can say implicitly is that elsewhere in the charter, the council as a body has the authority to appropriate funds um, as well. And it's under that authority that I stand before you and, and ask for you to do that tonight. Well, that may be true. I think uh, the council collectively has the authority to do that, but individually we have the responsibility to do it the right way. Councilor Clucci. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for a, a great presentation, actually, tonight. And I, I 
echo, it, it's remarkable to me that you're within 0.5 percent of the budget. One thing that struck me when this came forward, though, uh, was that we're, we're trying to fill a hole or a deficit. And when I looked at it, it, it didn't make sense to me because I knew that interest rates had been so much better than they had been in the past. One thing that in my back of the napkin calculation is that we're, the savings and in interest are going to more than cover these um, expenses. Is there, have we looked at how much we expect to save in debt service for this project? And do we have, can we provide the council with that, a number? That? We, we certainly can. I've not done the calculation, but we know what the true interest cost is for at least the first two pieces, which is the majority of the borrowing. Uh, we know what those rates are, and we can run the amortization schedule and compare that to the estimate. I, I think your point is fair. There's no question that we'll stay well within the overall estimate, including interest, uh, in the explanation. Okay. Thank you. So we've referenced uh, favorabilities that, uh, that uh, are apparent and will possibly grow and, and that they could be potentially applied to, uh, uh, to debt service um, if we, uh, and to the expenses associated with this, with this project. Where else could we use those, those funds? Is there any place else we could use that favorability that um, Councillor Cloutier has referenced. There's really no place for us to use it other than it creates arguably more authority <coughs> to to borrow. We're just borrowing at a lower rate. That, that, that doesn't materialize in any kind of tangible way to us. So if I if I have follow this correctly, so basically we're just going to be we could potentially pay for the uh, the cost overruns with the project from the project with additional debt rather than taking it out of fund balances. Correct. And that's a function of the fact that we have had, to date, about $900,000 of kind of unexpected or unaccounted for bid premium. And because of that, have not borrowed as much as we expected we need, would need to otherwise. So just one following question, if I may, that still pertains to the matter of fund balances. Uh, we've talked quite often about different sources of funds that include an unrestricted fund or a general fund or a community services fund or a fund for turf and track and other departmental funds or, or in fact even committee funds housing alliance funds and so forth so is there a report that has a listing of all funds available for the town uh, you know that we could look at and try to understand what you know what the the total is and where these funds are the reason I ask this is that uh, the process of getting up to speed as a council and people have mentioned there's only two folks here who were uh, diving deep on this going back a year ago over a year ago it's taken a tremendous effort for us to really get up to speed, and that's with hours of studying and reading of the past you know, week or so. We know that you mm -hmm. have devoted a lot of time to this. But <clears throat> if we're really, if the, if the question is how do we pay for it, not if we're gonna pay for it, then, then how, how can you help us uh, as a body solve for that effectively? Well, I, I'm providing my professional recommendation as to what I think is the best solution to solve the problem here. Uh, to your earlier question, uh, the fiscal policy goes into great detail uh, that dictates exactly what goes into the undesignated fund balance, and there's a number of components, including uh, assigned funds and unassigned and so on and so forth, so we can spend some time at finance to, to go over that. Uh, beyond that, all funds are certainly accounted for in the annual audit. Uh, that's probably the, the best place to see everything you know, in one document, if you will. Uh, again, that's something we can spend some time at finance to look at further. Thanks. Councillor Katarina? No, I didn't. Oh, Councillor Gleisstein. Um, Tom, you mentioned uh, that the GA fund um, may have an overage. Do you have any estimates on that and where we would, um, how we would make that up? Not tonight, you mentioned it in a separate meeting. I don't have the exact numbers, but uh, so far w we are trending above and I have all indications are that that will continue through the fiscal year. Um, 
that along with the uh, legal budget is overextended already. And uh, again, uh, I expect that we'll, we'll have some legal expense from here on out. Um, and the overlay account this year, um, with the residential reval, there have been a fair amount of um, abatements granted appropriately. So those things together uh, have caused me to put in a budget curtailment in the current year. The good news is we're doing that uh, before half of the experience of the fiscal year. So I'm hopeful that that will reap some benefits at year end. And that's done directly in recognition of these. And this is an ongoing systematic process that's tracking where we are to budget. And when we see things that are going awry, we try to take um, prudent measures to correct those. Great. And I had a question for Mr. Perkins. Um, in October of um, 2018, um, when the, um, you know, the overage was, I don't want to say discovered, but once it was priced out in detail and then there were a lot of cuts to the project and then we ended up with the 400000 and something, which is now I think up to 500 and something. Um, at the time there was a contingency fund of 500000 and uh, you obviously didn't want to cut, go, go into that contingency before you had even started. Um, can you um, explain anything? Did, was that used for anything specific, or how, how did the is the contingency all gone? Where does that stand? Uh, contingency is uh, expended as we pass that 420 mark. Um, predominantly was spent on uh, excess uh, or costs for the winter conditions last winter um, to keep the project on schedule and to uh, all of the. Items, uh, we, we talked about uh, the rest of it is uh, uh, a bunch of things that are very normal to a project of this size which is why you have a contingency and uh, I you know they're enumerated in great detail for full transparency I'd be happy to go into those details but it, it's just all those little things that come up that you need to deal with and be able to deal with uh, swiftly to keep things on track yeah you had explained that it was a narrow margin but that you thought you could work within that so I know it's that's a, been a question that's been asked um, and I just um, I, I know some other questions that had come up um, from 2018 um, one of the things that was discussed was um, not outfitting the entire building that isn't uh, isn't going to be needed for the foreseeable future so how many um, so the 350 how many offices are we actually looking to outfit and are there mm -hmm. some that are expansion that we really don't have to do at this point in time? Um, I've just wondered if you could speak to that 350 and the number of offices and the num what what's is that fitness equipment? Is it um, safety equipment? Is it what can you speak to that number? Because that's the largest number. Sure. Um, First answer is no, we aren't fitting out uh, every space in the building. For instance, we have 14 uh, dormitory rooms for the firefighters and we're only uh, fitting out 10 of those uh, to handle our initial need. Uh, there's no fitness equipment at all in the budget. We're relocating uh, a substantial amount of uh, furniture, fixture, and equipment that's still salvageable uh, and, and uh, appropriate to use from the existing public safety building over. So that 350 number was actually much larger, as you can imagine. <laughs> we have pared that down and we've set aside things so that um, uh, we can we can make that manageable. So that was larger and that's something when I actually met with the fire chief said you had been working on quite a bit to figure out did it cost more to move something or did it, you know, cost more to buy it. Okay. Um, and so um, my other question is for Tom. So I think, you know, I really appreciate, you know, what you said. You know, there's a lot of sensitivity around borrowing. So you're trying to find a solution that didn't involve more borrowing, but feels like we're a little bit between a rock and a hard place, right? So, um, you know, in my mind, this amount, it is part of that capital project. I, it's tough for me to break it apart, you know, so therefore it is, you know, it's over the 400,000 because it's part of the 21 million. So it's part of what the voters voted. So I think it sounds like we have the money to issue more debt underneath what the voters gave us authority for. But you were trying to be sensitive to 
borrowing more, mm -hmm. if I'm saying this, this well, dilemma a, that we're in right now. That's a fair characterization. Um, so I, uh, you know, I'd love to hear from folks. Um, I think, you know, we're this far. Uh, it is it is impressive how how fast this building came up and and was was built, um, and so we're we're very close now. Uh, and I would really like to hear from folks. I hope some people are watching. You know, um, this is a first reading, but you know, which way do they would they like mm -hmm. to see the council go? Would they like to see the council um, use our authority to take on less debt um, since we had that, or would they like us to borrow under our debt? our debt, uh, what we really actually already hmm. are authorized to do right. so that we don't have to uh, really go against what I feel might be really going against the charter. For me personally, I know there's arguments on both sides, but thank you. Councilor Caterina. Yeah, I just have some questions for uh, Mr. Perkins, if I, if I could just, hopefully they're easy to answer. This is as much for the community to hear. Um, I know that we're a PSAP, and there are, I hope I'm getting the acronym right, for the dispatch, uh, for uh, an area dispatch as opposed to just solely for the town of Scarborough. Um, and it's my understanding that as part of the requirements for being uh, a PSAP, um, you got to make sure your technology and everything is right at the tippity top and, and maintained and whatever. Are any of the PSAP things included in this equipment and fixtures or has that already been figured in, i.e. whatever is needed for equipment for dispatch to stay that's in that top number. notch? Yep, that's in the project budget. So yeah, I, I know it's in the, pro but is it in any of these over so-called overrun numbers? I hate to use that term because we're not sure. Um, what it would require us to do is a delicate uh, pivot of the dispatch uh, as we move from one building to the other and right. move equipment from right. one building to the other, which is still part of the plan, just not all of the equipment. So right. effectively, we have a swing space. Um, and then uh, certainly there's, uh, you know, network infrastructure that's part of the building construction itself. And that also needs to pivot. Um, but... Um, what's in the 350 furniture item is really more about desks and chairs okay. and that All sort right. of thing. All right, because that was asked to me by a constituent. That's why I, yep. I wanted to ask that. Um, also, this DEP delay, the DEP permit, I remember that, and that was extremely frustrating. Um, was there a particular reason why that that took longer than it should have? Um, we heard uh, rumors on the street, but from what we got from the project manager at DEP that because of the public uh, concern that was voiced directly to her, mm -hmm. um, she wanted to be very, very thorough in her write-up of the DEP permit, mm -hmm. and as a result, that took more time. So was it members of the public who were uh, reaching out to the DEP outside of the so-called process and, and, and making complaints about... Potential. Yep. One of the things we talked about was um, direct access onto Route 1 versus right. the Sawyer Road and uh, whether that was the, um, uh, from a traffic study perspective, the, the right thing to do. And uh, so we provided some uh, substantiation of that, why our current uh, traffic movement plan was the, was the better option, right. in our opinion, and uh, was backed up by Maine DOT's traffic engineer uh, through a letter. But it was that it was that process of complaining, if I want to, I mean, that may be a strong word, though that bogged down the DEP permitting potentially. I, I, I honestly didn't experience it firsthand, but that was certainly what we were hearing was okay. the reason. Uh, and then um, I'm not sure who can answer this communication tower. We're going to make some income off from that, correct? Yeah. What's the what's the prediction on? Because uh, I want counselors to remember that there's going to be some income coming in. I'm not sure. I'm not on finance, so I don't. Where's it going to go? What's it going to be used for? 
that will be a subject of the upcoming budget. Uh, right. You'll see a new revenue for the first time. I think conservatively, we should be looking at six figures for annual oh, income. Wow. Okay. Uh, we have hired a broker to help um, identify and, and negotiate leases on our behalf. And with their contacts in the industry, we think we can maximize our potential there. I just wanted to follow up on a couple of questions. To your question of delays with DEP, uh, we did hear um, comments similar to what Mr. Perkins said, but I can also report, just talking to folks in the development world, um, DEP was very understaffed and, and they had some difficulty just moving things across their desks. So I, uh, I don't think it's fair to characterize it one way or another. There was just a, a, a number of things that came to bear. The other thing that we can do, we actually have a discrete, uh, regarding the furniture uh, for the building, we have a discrete list. and um, and. If, if that's of interest, we can share that with you so you can get a sense of what we're looking at. And keep in mind, we're moving from roughly 25,000 square feet to 50,000 square mm. feet. So um, we have folks sharing three or four or five people sharing a desk now. Uh, in the new <laughs> building, we are properly outfitting them with their own workspaces. And so it should come as no surprise, uh, even if we brought every stick of furniture over, and, and much of it is not worth it, frankly, uh, we would not have enough to to fill the space and accommodate the needs of the current staff. Mm -hmm. um, the final piece is to Councillor Gleistein's point, you know, in hindsight, um, I could have been silent on this and you would have seen a bond order sometime in April and it would have been to fund the final third of this and probably, um, I wouldn't say none the wiser, but because it's been a, a, a conversation, uh, but I really thought it would be prudent to step up and this is not something we've, uh, been unaware of or ashamed of. It's it's a uh, it's a problem we've known about, and we collectively need to find a way forward. And and uh, I'm hopeful you'll do that. Councilor, just a real quick last question. I, I'm still stuck on restrict. So on the bond rating, do they look at the? Does it matter to them whether it's restricted funds or unrestricted funds, or do, or they just look at any any change in reserves is something that will trigger their their inspection or concern i believe our definition of undesignated fund balance is fairly common across the industry so i think they don't uh, obsess over the details internally they're interested in what percentage of your fund balance uh, but, but but that, that is that that percentage that relates to fund balance is it both the restricted and unrestricted funds so it's it's it doesn't matter which bucket they're in it's okay that it helps all me comes in it, and the uh, okay. fiscal policy you. dictates you. you know yeah. Yep. all that breakdown but it all rolls up to a final number which is what i reported Thank you. earlier that's helpful thank you okay <clears throat> okay uh i have a couple quick since we're reading some things i'm gonna i want to read the yes or no question on the ballot it said shall order shall the order entitled order authorizing insurance uh, issuance of up to 19.5 million dollars in general obligation bonds of the town of scarborough to fund costs for a new public safety building to be approved and the, and the answer is yes or no. So my question to you is, and, and the answer was yes, according to the voters, if we passed all of this onto bond right now, how confident are you that we would still be under $19.5 million in the issuance of bonding? With what I know today, we can say within those, that authority, there's more experience to come, but we don't expect that to be. Okay, and then just, since I have the floor, I'm going to take it. The third part of this ballot is it says validity. It's yes. down here in one paragraph. It hides on you. Mm -hmm. But it does say the validity of the bonds and the voters' ratification of the bonds may not be affected by any errors in the above estimates. Mm -hmm. So my question to, or what I would draw the attention to, is there's one line in, there's two lines on the ballot. There's two lines on the ballot. One is for the total cost of this product, project that said the word estimate. And one is for, the other one says, the interest rate that we're getting on our bonds. So there's two words on the ballot, two things on this ballot that say the word estimate. Down here that the voter said yes on, the validity again says, the validity of these bonds, of the voter's ratification of the bonds, may not be affected by any errors in the above estimates. And there's only two lines that are estimates. And right now, we are benefiting from one of the estimates being off. We're benefiting from the 3.5% estimate being off and we're struggling with the fact that the cost estimate was being off so those are the two sides of the equation I think that we're wrestling with and to me I see a very a language that both of those are the only two lines that say the word estimate we have a clause at the bottom of this ballot that says that this referendum cannot be affected by those estimates 
and we have a town manager who can say with close to absolute certainty that if we bond the rest of this, so we don't do what's on the order, that we would stay under the $19.5 million. Am I? I? I would still be asking for you uh, to grant the appropriation authority, yep. but the yep. source of funds would be through indebtedness or, yeah. Okay. So, so the 19.5, we're not in danger of going over that. In fact, this order, the way it's written, is being extra cautious that we're not going over that. Well, then, How much have we bonded today? 17.6? Yeah, 76.25, uh, basically. Okay. So All we right. have about 1.87 million left in bonding authority. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions for? So just really yep. quick, but you started out um, your part of the presentation, Tom, by saying that the attorneys thought we shouldn't exceed the total amount listed on the referendum. Attorneys, I think that's their doing, opinion. Are doing what their jobs are, which is giving us a legal opinion in, in the yep. best possible yep. light to protect against any challenge. Right. I just want to make sure I had that right. Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. And yeah. I, we can totally debate this. I think after. <laughs> and actually, since we're up there, can can it's is it possible to ask specifically about this validity cause? Because I think there's been a lot of discussion about the text above it, and I I feel like this validity cause speaks pretty specifically to some of the things we're struggling with, so it would be nice to get a legal opinion on this particular clause, which is the last part of the ballot. And, and, and I'm sorry, Mr. Yep, go ahead. Yep. Um, is don't forget the last sentence in that validity clause says, if the actual amount of the total debt service for the bond issue varies from the estimate, the ratification by the electors is nevertheless conclusive and the validity of the bond issue is not affected by reason of the variance. I had a question about the reconciliation. I know Mr. Perkins pointed out that we could expect to start seeing the final uh, reconciliation of the project uh, with the plan uh, in May, uh, May, I guess you said, or sometime like that. Uh, is that right? Yes, yeah, substantial completion um, is slated for March 27th. Okay. And so it would be uh, a month or so after that. Great. So then the other question I have would be for Tom Hall, and that is, th thank you. Um, when we start doing the final reconciliation, or we're coming down, you know, coming down to the end here, will we reconcile, uh, how will that reconciliation be made? Will it be made against the, you know, the numbers we've been seeing on the ballot here, the, the 21548, or is it some other number? Um, I'm assuming for that calculation, however, uh, we won't be let off the hook if we have any errors with estimates. You know, we'll have to be more precise than what um, the ballot has allowed. Well, the, the term reconciliation is really just a recognition that we've got experience um, still to come. And to the extent that we need what we know today isn't everything, we need to come and do a final cleanup. We expect that will be fairly small and hopefully simple and hopefully nothing, frankly, but we want to just make you aware of that. And in a perfect world, we wait to do all of this until we knew all those answers. My dilemma is that I have contracts that I will not sign uh, because I don't have the authority to spend the money. And so that's why I'm here before you tonight. Thank you. I just raised my hand to get called on myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Councillor Johnson, yes. Um, so, do you, was the the lawyer's legal opinion about your authority more because this has exceeded the amount? Is it more about you coming back and asking, or was it more about the? Re I mean, we have this one legal opinion, which I think has been referenced, that essentially says, yeah, if you carve this out of the wrong, the right way, then it, it won't trigger the four hundred. Right. But is this initially triggered by the fact that the lawyer said that? We're exceeding this, so you would have to approach us. They raised the issue that not only is there an indebtedness component, yep. which has been clear and I think everyone appreciates, yep. but the voters are also approving a, a total appropriation amount. Okay. And it's okay. that secondary piece okay. that um, that is the issue, frankly. Okay. Yeah, I, I, Tom, I have one more question. You had mentioned that. Uh, one of the avenues would be 
to go back to the voter if, if that's what was decided upon, but that wouldn't be the ideal. Could you just expand, expound on that, about what the risk would be? I think you mentioned risk. Would it be the timing of the move-in? Yeah, I, I have not consulted with the chiefs, but uh, essentially we would not move forward on those remaining items, uh, part one of that motion. Uh, so essentially none of the furniture and right. fixtures. Um, could we make do with what we have? Um, I really can't answer that definitively. If we, if we would, it would not be ideal. Right. Uh, we've got a community room that is supposed to seat 100. We wouldn't right. have furniture for it. So. And I'm not suggesting that, I'm just trying to under, un, the, understand that. The other option would be to delay the move-in move -in date, and I do have fears that that may upset the sale of our right. existing building. Right. Um, I can't say that definitively, but that would be a matter of negotiation. I, I, uh, you know, we'd be looking at many months delay at, at best, it seems to me, and I, I fear what that would do to the uh, sale of that building. Right. Well, let's say for just sake of discussion that the, going to the voter was the avenue decided upon. You don't see any option of maybe negotiating with these vendors that hold these assets that we want that could deliver them anyway. I mean, we're a pretty good client. I'm sure we've used them before. They could float things for 90 days. Might cost us a little bit of interest. But I, I don't see this as, hey, if we don't, <clears throat> excuse me, we don't fund this, it stops and they don't get the, the items. There's got to be some flexible ways to do that, some creative solutioning. No? Uh, perhaps. I, I'm never going to say never, but uh, that seems to me to be a tall ask, particularly one that um, that assumes that voters would approve it on the right. schedule that we're right. asking them to, and that may not be the case. And right. So uh, th that would be a tough conversation. Right. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Caterina. And, uh, and, um, through the chair to yep. the other Councillor Johnson. If I were one of those furniture dealers or whatever, I'd be charging interest. Mm -hmm. So it would just add more cost. So mm -hmm. anyway, plus the cost of an election mm -hmm. and, and all of those things. So just, just take it. I know. Yep, I know. I'm just, facts, I'm just letting you know. Facts. Thank you. Just one other piece of it from the construction side of things. Um, so when these chairs show up to the new place, obviously those just drop into place. But there's any other components that we're buying that actually need to get physically wired and plumbed into the building. And <clears throat> that means if we don't order that, if we delay until to the day after to place the order and then it's 68 weeks, now suddenly we've extended the construction contract. And although it would be a very skeleton crew, there'll be additional construction costs related to that because of remobilizations and supervision and all these other things to uh, fulfill the obligations of, of the construction contract. So it's not a huge number, but it's not a tiny number, but it factors into the equation. Thank you. Okay. With that, thank you, Tom. Okay. And thank you, Mr. Perkins. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Oh, yeah. We had a public comment, top. We had public comment. Before Tom. <laughs> hey, is there any further comment since it was okay. nothing? Okay. So take a motion again. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. And discussion. Councilor Cucci. Yeah, I, uh, I support this as it, it reads, but I'm going to offer an amendment because there is uh, some ambiguity, and, and I want to talk about that amendment a little bit. Uh, Councilor Johnson or Chair Johnson uh, brought up what was put before the voters on the ballot, and I think when you read through that, it's clear that there's enough money that was allocated by the voters to complete this project and then okay. some. Councilor Cucci, can you make the motion first? Yes. Told. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, a motion, a move to amend Order 19103, um, the second half as it relates to funding, to read, and further, in order to fund such appropriations, utilize fund sources approved via referendum question one on November 7, 2017. And that's it. And do I have a second for the, okay, thank you. Okay. Now it's up for discussion. 
Councilor Clucci. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So now I'll, I'll explain my rationale, and I, I'm supportive of the way it was presented initially, uh, but I, I want to talk about it because I, I, I'm hoping that we can come to clarity on, on the issues that we've all been struggling with. And on the ballot, I think it's clear, and I'm going to qualify that clear, but that uh, the town was authorized, town manager was authorized to issue up to 19 and a half million of general obligation bonds to apply the proceeds from the sale of a public safety building and to utilize reserve funds that had been dedicated specifically for this purpose. Uh, where the complication comes in because of the way that was worded is when you go out and actually try to enter contracts or sign contracts, how much do I have to spend? Because there's two unknowns, maybe three. I don't know if the reserve fund balance was, uh, was unknown, but the, the sale of the building hadn't happened yet. We, had it, we didn't have it under contract. Uh, the interest rates were unknown on the bonds, and you never know how much you're going to get from bonds. Typically, you get less than the amount that you're going out for. As it happened, we got more. So the, um, I think the voters were clear with authorizing how much we can go to market and, and raise for this project, uh, but it was subject to some unknowns. Uh, as you're trying to complete the project, you need some clarity about how much you can spend. So I think the general consensus of the council and the manager and the attorney was let's go with the 21.548 million. But at the end of the day, I, I think what the voters said was as long as you're within the constraints of the 19.5 million in bonds, the sale of the building, and the reserve funds, then that's what they approved. So that's kind of what this motion does is ties it back to the ballot. It says as long as you can spend, you know, cover these specific items with the original funding that was authorized, then we approve. Any more discussions on the amendment? Councillor Hayes? What is the 675 building fund reserve? Have we used that? Is that available? Where is that's um, a new flavor? Uh, 625, I believe, is the number that's on the ballot question. Right, right. But is that um, is there a was there a restricted fund for a building reserve? It was created over the years. Uh, the town sold a large piece of property in the corner of Commerce Drive and Route One before my time, and it was yeah. uh, put into a special reserve account they created for it for this very purpose. Uh, from that fund, we actually purchased the three residential properties on, on the property that we're now building. So are those funds still available or not? So I'm trying to get to the, the funding yes. source identified was 625 in reserves. Do we have 625 in we, building reserve? The, the current balance of that is 611,000, but it's already counted toward the, the cost. So we're, it's already. So it's not available. It's not available. OK, thank you. It still exists, but it's not available. Does that make sense? OK. So, so as it relates to this motion, then if that's not available in your motion, what is the funding source? It, it would be any of the items that were approved by the voters on the ballot, uh, which includes the, the reserve funds, the sale of the building, or the issuance of up to 19 and a half million of bonds. So, so, so just so I understand, really the only thing left, we've already done the proceeds of the building. It's it hasn't closed yet, but yeah. It, it, it hasn't yeah. closed, but <coughs> taking account of that, the, the reserve isn't available. So what, what your motion effectively does is puts it out the bond. I, I, I think that's fair. I think that would be okay. the effect, is okay. that um, the 275, so uh, the 259 in interest, I would contend that should go mm -hmm. to this project anyways, and that should have been accounted for. So I don't, I don't think there's anything specific needed for us to authorize that use. I think it should be used there. But, but the, the 275 uh, that was coming from undesignated fund balance uh, would be funded through one of these three things, but it, more than likely it would be bonds. So when they issue their fi final batch of bonds and do the true right. up in right, April, right. it would probably be, it would be included in that number. But either one of, so I'm just trying to get clear, either yeah. one of these items you just referenced, the 259 in interest and the 275 from undesignated funds, were not on the ballot. So they wouldn't be, in your motion, they wouldn't be part of the funding source, right? Unless you amend the motion. Uh, the 275 from undesignated fund balance, no. It, what this would give him authority to do is to spend money on these items and to pay for them with what's already gone before the voters, the, which is if essentially I, Can I just interject? Yeah. yeah. The motion says that we're going to bond it. 
is what it says because everything else is accounted for. So our only action would be to bond it. And so when I asked the question of Tom earlier, what I was asking is knowing that Councilor Clucci was going to put up this amendment, if we take this $500,000 and bond it, are we still under the 19.5? And the answer is yes. So I think you're asking, I think you were looking for a direct answer. And I, I, I think I'm clearing it up because the other three sources that are listed are no longer, or they're very close to being spent. Am I miss? Interpreting your amendment? Uh, you, you're not. I, okay. uh, <laughs> it, it, you're trying to earmark one thing for, for something. It, to me, it's the total spend on the project that he's allowed to do. So if you want to say it's coming from bonds and, and whatever was earmarked for the reserve balance, it, it, that's fine. I think the practical effect, I don't think it's going to be that we're going to bond 500000 I think it's going to be that we're going to bond uh, the additional two seventy five plus what other additional variances come up. Councilor Glastein. So um, I think the answer to this was in October um, that it would have been good had we not gone over the 21-548-095. But that council voted to do that. This motion now, in my mind, should not be in front of us. Um, as Tom said, in April, he could put a, a bond issuance out, stay within this. I don't know why we're voting on this. I think it's great that we looked at it and understand it, so I am not have no problem with it coming in front of the council. Um, but the vote to go over the total estimated cost came by the previous council, not this council. So I don't see what we're voting on. That's just me. Just to be clear, there was no vote taken. Uh, there was, I think, full discussion and disclosure of that fact. There was no action taken by council. Oh, it was just a workshop where they kind right. of all right. agreed to do it. So, a, again, if, if I had been on that, I would have said, nope, this is what the voters voted for. If you got to make something smaller. I mean, I guess it's just very difficult to, for me because, you know, this is going to be a fantastic facility. I hope we can all be proud of it, but there's people tonight in Scarborough choosing whether to pay for their medicine or their taxes. They've got their heat turned down to 55. I, it's, 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 very, it's just tough for me that we even are spending this much, but the voters agreed to it. We should have stuck with that. We didn't, but because a favorable economy uh, in terms of interest, is going to allow us to borrow what they said we could borrow. I'm just not quite, I don't really want to put my imprint on this because, you know, this was really done by a previous council to say, yeah, go ahead, just go over what the voters said. Um, so I, I, they did it without a vote. I'm not sure why we're doing it with a vote. Councilman. I'm trying hard to do a couple things. One is to keep an open mind, which you probably know is hard for me at times. That, <laughs> and, and second is, to not muddy the waters further. And I, that was really the intent about the original order. We spent a lot of time wrestling to the ground, something we thought really nailed down what the gap was, 534,434. And we went even farther than that to say, here's where we think the funding can come from. Now, I think it's outstanding that Councilor Kluyer has found an upside and has captured that and quantified that. But the one thing, unfortunately, that I thought we had, if we, if we revise the order, we will lose that. And then my question on that is, well, so are we going to be doing this exercise again in a couple months? So I think it's, it's a question rather than a, an answer, but that's my, my plea. I, I, don't, I don't really know how to solve on this one. So I think... The, my interpretation would be the $250,000 of interest earned is going to be a little bit more than two fifty. dollars So I'm going to call it three hundred dollars just for sake of argument. That, is, that needs to be put towards the cost of this project. Right. It is going to be put towards the cost of this project. Right. So, what, so that part of this order is going to happen. So I guess what Clucci's, um, Councillor Clucci's amendment does actually addresses Kind of what Councillor Gleistein's actually saying is like, is look, we don't have to go to fund balance. Right. This ballot says we can do up to 19.5. Let's 
that interest earned needs to be so he's not suggesting that we bond five hundred thousand he's suggesting that once this guy is drained let's say there's two hundred grand left then we bond that two hundred grand because it will be long, that will be well below the nineteen point five so and, and it addresses it essentially is a non-action action <laughs> Because it lets the referendum stand the way it is. Well, I think it clarifies that Tom has the authority to spend the money. And, and that's yeah. what's not clear right now. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep. I guess what I'm struggling with, the way that may be how we're interpreting it, how this is written doesn't seem to say that. So I, I'm just, I mean, this says this is limiting us to utilize fund sources approved by referendum question one on November 7th. It doesn't talk about this interest income. It talks about three right. specific things. So this language, as we're interpreting it, this language doesn't represent that. So I, I think, you know, I'm not sure of the process, but we're going to have, I think there's a different motion we need to make. Do you want to amend the amendment? I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, because I think that's a fair point. Mm -hmm. well, well, I mean, I uh, strongly believe that that interest should go towards this project. I don't, I, I guess I'm assuming that it's implicit. That's why one of the things that threw me off with the original motion was that uh, interest due to bonds that you issued for a project should be accounted for in the project. Um, I don't know if there's a statute or not. I'd be happy to say that, yes, this interest will be applied uh, to the project. It, uh, honestly, I haven't researched if that would complicate, complicate something else. But uh, So that would identify one of the fund sources that were identified in the original yeah. motion. I think we should take the time to get specific uh, with the re revised motion so that we are saying exactly what we want it to be. Councilor Gleistein. Uh, I'd just like to say, um, in reference to a comment that um, Councilor Clucci made, um, that uh, Tom needs the author authority from us to, to do this. Um, so, I mean, we already bought the the PSAT equipment, like Jean Marie was talking about. So, I mean, this could have been any number of items that we've already bought. Tom has already had the authority to do that. We just decided to put certain things on a list because, you know, maybe of the timing we're at. What I question is, do we have the authority to change the total amount that the voters said is what we could spend? If we don't have that authority, which I don't think that we do, um, uh, then it needs to go back to referendum and that amount needs to go up or we can interpret it and say we're just going to it we're, we're going to bond so and then Tom has the authority so I'm not comfortable saying Tom doesn't have the authority I mean I you know he either has it or it needs to go back to the voters because I don't think we have it you know um, as a part of a capital project to uh, Councillor Ken Johnson's point you know, we, we could break up all the bricks and say, you know, the bricks in this part of the building didn't cost more than $400,000, so that wasn't part of the capital part. This is part of the capital project. No, there's no doubt about it. You can't have an empty building. So that's where I'm at. Councilor Yeah, I, I guess I'm not sure how to orchestrate this and where we are. I mean, where I am is I, I am really nervous about taking anything for the reasons I've already articulated out of our reserves. I just think based on where we're going and some of the other things we know we're going to have to fund from reserves, I would prefer to bond this. My, mo my highest comfort zone to address both concerns of our attorney, and I don't think we should casually just dismiss the attorney, would be going back out to voters and be very clear about we're going to, how much we're going to borrow and what the total cost of the project is and get their approval. I think that's the cleanest way. If there's some reasons we can't do that, my position would be we should do this all through bonds. We get to amortize that amount over the next 30 years. We're going to end, and to take 275000 in interest, or two fifty nine in interest, and two seventy five in unrestricted fund balance, given that Tom's already introduced austerity measures. That tells me that this could be a really rough, we're going to be challenged to meet budget this year, so we may actually not have a surplus this year. And I think those signals to the bond raters as we look forward to, if we're going to do a library expansion, we're going to do any of those things, I think we need to be planful about how that's going to impact us long term. 
So my position is I would prefer to bond this um, totally, put it all into bonds, and give the authority to do that. I know he doesn't have people. Tom doesn't have the authority at this point to do it, based on I don't think. Mike, but Tom, do you want to respond to that well, before? Again, we're trying. I'm trying to respect the the legal counsel's advice here, and it's about the appropriation authority that's the that's tripping this up. Um, under normal circumstances, we go ahead and spend money on the expectation of bonding. Very often, the project will precede the actual proceeds, and we, we do it through um, you know, cash reserves we have on hand. So uh, that, that's not a problem to me, because I know we'll have a bond issue next spring that we can uh, clean this up with. But it's really the appropriation piece that I was trying to address um, this evening, and as part of that, to identify the funding. Councilor Katarina. Um, now I'm really confused, but that's not unusual when it comes to numbers like this, right? Um, so we have bonded to this point. How much of the that the people have? Currently, uh, we bonded seventeen million six hundred and twenty-five thousand, essentially. Which leaves how much remaining? About one point eight seven million in additional bonding authority. So we have that amount left to bond without having to go back to the voters. Correct. Well, we don't know. Well, let me finish. So we don't know, you know, what the cleanup costs are going to be, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So then the hang up is you're, are, are you saying that you need this cash now and you can't wait till bonding or? That's what I'm getting hung up on because I agree. I mean, I don't want to see us taking out of the fund balance if it can be taken care of because the voters have already given us authority to spend this money. No, it's not a cash flow issue. It's, it's I'm authorized. Let's, let's look at the annual budget. You grant appropriation authority vis-a-vis -vis the budget. You hand it back to me to administer the budget. So long as I work within the parameters of that authorization, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. That's really akin to what we have here, is we have an authority um, of the total project costs that we know we're going to exceed. And I can't in good conscience exceed that without mm -hmm. someone. And I believe the council has the authority to grant that appropriation authority. So you're saying that we're going to, I'm sorry. So you're saying we're going to be going over that 21? No, that's oh, what sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. We are going to go over that 21 point something? Yes, to yes. the tune of $535,000. But well, we're only going to bond about 19 point, let's say, two or three. So we're going over the expense, but under the bonding amount. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So really the challenge is then when the voter went and voted on this, <coughs> they voting on the bonding, right. or they voting on the cost of the project. Now, in my question about the charter, I thought I heard this was the charter is bonding driven, correct? Obligation driven. The, the title the would suggest that, but right. I, I, there's language right. contained within that makes uh, it a little bit ambiguous. It appears to yeah. speak to appropriation authority as well. So, Tom, I have a question. Um, so, the ballot said the total estimated cost was twenty one five four eight zero nine five. Um, did the attorneys weigh in on the fact that it said estimated instead of not to exceed? Because if it said not to exceed, that seems much more clear than it does say estimated. I, they didn't put it in writing, but uh, I can say that they chose the 21-5 number. They could have made an equally good argument that our authority was 19-5. Um, so they, they were being as liberal as they thought they could be within the confines of this ballot question. 19.5 19, for the bonding, though. Uh, it could be interpreted that that also was the appropriation limit. And then you have the validity clause. I mean, I, I, I want to encourage everyone here, this part of this conversation from day one through now, this has all been done, I believe, with full transparency, with yes. positive oh, yeah. intent. Uh, it would be different if this was not, you know, this came to light right now, and it's not the case or that we're adding additional items that were never contemplated. None of that is true. Right. And so I appreciate the challenge this presents in terms of how you may view the intent or the spirit of the charter. 
but take all those other things into consideration in that analysis as well. This was all done with for all the right reasons and appropriate reasons in my view. Councilor Hayes. <laughs> yeah, in, in trying to move this forward, um, so, so two things for me. I think we have two issues. I think we have the issue, and I think Councilor Johnson Sr., how do we, how do we, how do we do this? We have <laughs> um, I'm the chair. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I think we have two issues. I, I think one is there's an interpretation, I, and I think Councilor Johnson, not the chair, um, can identify the issue. I think some of our constituents thought, and, and I, I'm on finance and other things, I thought I was approving a total expenditure. I think a lot of people think that. On the other hand, there's good arguments about we were authorized to borrow up to a certain limit. To move, this is the first read. One place we could go tonight is to approve the first read that we finance this through bonding. We wait till we get any public pushback mm -hmm. saying they have an issue with that. And, and there is this problem with it exceeding the limit. But I think we have, as you've heard tonight, we have a compelling story on why we're a little bit over budget. Right. There's been extraordinary things done. They've delivered a great product in challenging times. I think we all can be good sitting here saying, this is the right of money to spend on this project. There are no surprises. We've known this right along. Right. So I guess the motion, and we're out of, the process isn't right, but my motion would be just make this really simple and just say, we authorize the town manager to bond the 534, is that the number, Tom, 534? The, the 259 and the 275 is 534, oh, yeah. if my math is. So that would be my motion, that we just bomb this whole thing. This is the first read. See what pushback we get from our constituents between now and the second read. And I just think it makes that simple and clean. So I think my only, and I, I actually, I complete, I'm in full agreement with you, except for the fact, as Councilor Cuche said, that interest earned, it, we should be bonding less that interest earned. That's all. Because that interest earned, we, that should be going towards debt service or the cost of the project. That, so if in your suggestion it's implied that that interest earned goes and gets kicked towards the project. Well, I was, I was implicitly reading between the lines of what Tom shared with us. I, I was thinking that 275 would be a good budget item to help us okay. this year. Um, Right. I mean, we've earned interest before on bonds, and okay. they've gone into general funds. Right. I think the 275. Are we, to do that? Are we allowed to do that? Okay. I think that okay. 275 gives us some regular room on the budget. So, Tom, I mean, I, mm -hmm. reading between the lines, are you concerned that we may be really close to the, the budget numbers and not have the surpluses we've had in the past? Our debt service is going to climb significantly due in part to this building for next okay. year. So right. okay. any assistance uh, to help defray that expense will be of great help. Um, before tonight, I would be nervous. Uh, otherwise, I'd be nor nervous to bond more than we needed. Uh, but I appreciate the spirit with which that suggestion is being made. Uh, and th this would certainly come before you in a bond order, as you are accustomed to seeing, that has right. the details of the projects and the actual amounts. Uh, so that would be reconciled and, and that's the wrong word, that would be approved by this body uh, at a later date, probably in the April time frame. But does that, does that solve your immediate issue? If, if, if we pass that motion tonight, the bond, the full amount, authority to bond up to the full amount of the 534. That would satisfy my concern. If we want to address the appropriation issue, the, frankly, the amendment Councilor Colucci has put forward, I think we'll do that. Um, as has been discussed, the practical effect of that amendment is um, because the other sources of funds are known at this point, it is bonding uh, effectively what's being meant here. Unless something happens with the sale of the building and we find ourselves in a different oh, situation. But, um, you know, it, as we sit here, sit here tonight, those other two sources are known. Yeah. So I, I think Clucci and Hayes are suggesting the same thing. <laughs> so I, perhaps for clarity, we go with Councillor Hayes's language, because I think it's a little bit easier to understand. Yeah, yeah no, I know. And I'll, I'll call the vote on his amendment. I know we're still discussing his amendment. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Councilor Glycine. I'm sorry, I have one last question. So is this it, this list, or are we gonna be dancing on a pin, you know, three months from now with things that weren't in the list? I mean, or is this it? There's still four months of experience, so there could be, could be things. We, we feel as though the closer we get to the end, the smaller those things get, or the smaller the surprises are. Uh, but you know, we'd be remiss to say that this is everything. Uh, but they've been good stewards of the project. I think they're going to continue to and not bring anything into the project costs that aren't essential. OK, so I'm going to let everybody process where we are for a second. I'm about to call a vote on Councillor Clucci's amendment. Or, but I'd, I'd be happy to withdraw. Okay. Yeah. So the amendment's been withdrawn. Second. Is there? I'm sorry. <laughs> no second. Sure. Oh. Does Councillor Hayes want to offer up an amendment? Yeah, so I would, I would like to. <laughs> yes, he said enthusiastically. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm trying to. So that's why I let everybody pause for a second. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, uh, the amendment I'd offer up is order number 19, one of the first reading to authorize the following appropriations and expenditure, expenditures for the public safety building as written here. And further order such appropriations will be from additional bond. Up, up to our bonding authority of 19.6. Okay, I think that's important. So up to 19.5. The authorized 19.6. Yep. Five. Five. Yep. Is there a second to that amendment? I'll second it. Okay. Is there a discussion on Councillor Hayes' amendment? I, I think the only discussion is between now and the second read. Let's, let's try to firm up the language, run it by yep. council. And okay. yeah. All those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? Okay, seven zero. Now we're back to the original motion as amended. Is there any discussion on the original motion as amended? No. Okay. I'm going to say one quick thing. I, I will say, and I, I think that we have a pattern of sometimes feeling like we're in the dark and playing catch up. So I would just encourage as much as possible I think one of the things that would even help us, we don't have a line item of the project right now. And so we're up here as decision makers and there's seven of us and I don't have a simple one sheet in front of me of where we are. Um, so sometimes I think when there's perceived frustration on our end or unwillingness to, to hear things the first time, it's because we feel like we're going to battle without any weapons. Um, so. Just in the future, I would strongly encourage everybody involved, help us help you by getting these pretty basic items for us. I know this sounds like a lecture, but at this point, it's been a year and this has been a pattern and it's, it's difficult. It's, it's incredibly difficult to make these decisions while, while having some of these basic stuff. Um, so I apologize for the soapbox, but I'm allowed to do it. Uh, with that, I will call a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, great. We are now on to item number eight, which is non-action items, and there are none. Item number seven, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. I will start with Councillor Hamill. Uh, we're in that unusual period of time where we're kind of into the holidays and haven't really kind of got uh, into our cadence and stride yet, but I do have a an update for the appointments and negotiations committee. We've got a, a summary of openings and we'll be queuing those up for our first meeting in January. So otherwise, nothing further to report. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Johnson. My update is I met with the, as the liaison to the Eastern Trail Alliance representative uh, that is also closely tied to the community service department. So probably have a discussion with Mr. Hayes because he is the liaison with the community <coughs> service department and see if there's some synergies there or some handoffs of, 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 of task or whatnot. Other than that, we have our first uh, communications committee meeting uh, first week of January and I'll be sending out an agenda on that and looking forward to working with the my fellow counselors, Mr. Clucci and 
Mrs. Gleistein. Thank you, Councillor Katarina. Um, the ordinance meeting that was originally scheduled for tomorrow is canceled. Um, we will be holding ordinance the regularly scheduled time Thursday, January 16th at 4 o'clock. So stay tuned. Thank you. Councillor Gleistein? Um, rules and policy is not meeting in December. Um, we'll have our first meeting, well, first meeting of this council in January. And uh, I believe that's the second Tuesday of the month at 8.30 hmm. a.m. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Hayes? <laughs> yeah, j just a quick one. The Transportation Committee met, and we actually had a good conversation about there's a requirement in some of our developments that developers have to put in sidewalks. But in some cases, these are sidewalk walks to nowhere because in some of these developments, there's no places to go. So there was some conversation around in the planning department if there really isn't a reason for a sidewalk in those communities that those developers make an in-kind contribution so it can contribute to sidewalks in other parts of town that make sense. And so that was something that was sort of percolated. I'll probably come back if that's a suggested change, but that was, that was the conversation. Thank you, Councilor Clucci. Yeah, I uh, look forward to my first uh, meeting as liaison to SEDCO uh, tomorrow morning. And I, I believe Councilor Hayes is going to be making a presentation, so we'll get to spend some quality time this, this couple of days. I also went to the uh, Metro Coalition meeting this past week, and um, there's something that I'm going to be doing a little work on. Some of you have seen, but there, uh, there's five of there's seven member communities with the Metro Coalition, and five have signed on to a um, resolution to try to improve housing affordability, uh, which is a little different than affordable housing. It's trying to make right. sure that we all have an adequate stock of housing for the different types of people in our communities. So I'm going to see if there's uh, uh, some potential language that we can uh, review and, and possibly adopt to, uh, to take part in that, and I'll be bringing that forward um, in the future. Thank you. Town Manager's Report. Yes, two quick things. Um, this weekend, uh, there was a real mm -hmm. traumatic event in our community, and uh, I know that it was tough on everyone, community members, uh, certainly the public safety community. I look in the audience, and I know many of these folks have been on uh, on, on the clock, around the clock, mm -hmm. uh, since uh, Sunday morning. So I, I very much appreciate, and I, I want to acknowledge just the, the event that we've all gone through, and uh, there's certainly more work and healing and grieving to do going forward. Um, there are, potentially there'll be a memorial service um, that will be announced. Uh, I see the chief nodding. Uh, we're working with the family at this point to see if we can help accommodate um, where that might be held mm -hmm. sometime uh, early in the new year. Uh, and just uh, as a housekeeping matter, just to remind everyone that we're switching the January meeting schedule from the first and third Wednesdays to the second and fourth. So make sure you have that in your schedule. Okay, uh, item number 11 is council member comments. I'll start with uh, Councillor Clucci at the end. Yeah, I, uh, I don't have anything specific other than uh, you know, great job to uh, police department, such a tragedy, and uh, thoughts and prayers go out to uh, the family. Councillor Hayes? Yeah, similar thoughts and prayers to the whole community, and then shifting a little bit, we are approaching the holidays, so happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Councillor Gleistein? I share those sentiments. Councilor Katarina? Uh, yeah, my sincere sympathies to the Pearson family. Mm -hmm. um, I knew Mr. Pearson from years of buying Christmas trees and just being in Scarborough. Um, he will be missed. Um, and my thanks to the police officers, um, both from Scarborough and the state police, who did a yeoman's job. Um, I, I think it's pretty amazing. You guys were able to tie all that together. That was crazy when I read about it. So um, thank you so much for what you do. I know that people don't always aren't always aware or thankful for the service of police officers, but I certainly am. Um, and also, um, yeah, it's holiday season, and so I hope everyone goes out and enjoys time with. Uh, family and friends because that's the most important thing in the world is time with those you love. So thank you. Councilor Johnson. 
I echo all the comments on the public service folks. I really appreciated the, uh, the direction or, that we got from Chief Moulton on, on the uh, questions we we're getting from the public on how those are doing. And uh, again, really appreciate it. On, on a side note for council business, I, I think it's become evident to me that at some point in time, we really have to uh, take a look at the, our charter. Uh, because if there's one thing that, it, well, there's a lot of things open to interpretation, but to me, the charter shouldn't be, and it's obvious that it is. And I know that uh, this year coming up, I do believe we're for a charter review. So the sooner we start thinking about that, getting the committee together and uh, addressing that type of thing, uh, uh, I think it would serve us all the better. Thank you. Councillor Hamlin? Uh, I share that the council's condolences to the family of Mr. Pearson uh, and special uh, words of appreciation to, to public safety and, and how they responded to the tragedy. Uh, I also wanted to just, you know, the background that they gave us on, you know, all of the work that's been done and the tr tremendous uh, effort to really uh, take over a $2 million uh, exposure and reduce that to something that's smaller than, you know, that's a tenth that size is really remarkable. So I, I want to say special thanks to the Chiefs and also to Mr. Perkins and all the folks, Kevin Freeman and, and the folks on that team. So. Uh, for doing that and for being patient with us and also uh, keeping uh, keeping in mind that we're just trying to solve for the best way to get help you get to the end of this and a successful outcome. And I, I really appreciate you being so uh, transparent and cooperative uh, with us in that effort. So thank you. Um, so I'll take my moment quick, quickly to remind every counselor here, uh, our goal setting workshop is Saturday, January 4th at eight in the morning. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't filled out your Google form, <coughs> Counselor <coughs> Hayes no, and Gleistein. No, uh, <laughs> I filled it out this week in Washington. Mm, I don't know if you did. But well, I filled up. I'll check it. Yeah. Um, if that's open to the public. It will be here in chambers. So if anybody's interested to see four, uh, our counselors for four hours around the table, it's a hoot. Uh, five if necessary. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. Secondly, I just wanted to, everybody at this table, um, we, on Friday afternoon, we were essentially, this was dropped in our lap, for lack, lack of a better term, the Friday afternoon. I did not want to spend my weekend with these people, and I did. Um, we spent a lot of time on the phone together, but I just want to thank everybody here for the fact that I feel like we can all pick up the phone and, and talk to each other, and sometimes it's blowing off steam, and then sometimes it's conversation, and it's nice to have that relationship. I think there's, we have some uh, very strong opinion people, but very, but everybody seems to be anchored in the fact they're willing to listen to each other, and that's, I appreciate all that. Um, real quick, I often end my meetings with little stories about my daughter. I did want to say yesterday there was a snow day. Um, so snow days at our house are sacred, because then data comes home from work and then I don't have to do anything so we always go out and play in the snow at nighttime so we got all bundled up yesterday and we got to go outside and my daughter paused and she said to me she said well data is it safe to go outside mm. because of what happened recently and I want you to know that I told her absolutely it was and we proceeded to play in the snow for two hours so and that is um, because of you guys are there in the front row so thank you very much um, and with that, I am going to call a uh, go to order 19104 and act on the request for an executive session pursuant to, pursuant to Title I MRSA 4056C in consultation with legal counsel relating to economic development. And um, before I ask for that, I'm going to also squeeze in a five minute break. So we will, we will go to executive session at 905. So, do I have a motion? motion? Okay. Second? Second. All those in favor? All those opposed?